What's in the box? Presented by Sure It'll Be Grand. And welcome back, everybody, to Sure It'll Be Grand. Presenting What's on the Box, because it's the first time we'll have the logo on the cover. Uh, oh. Yeah. So, yeah, welcome back uh, to uh, both uh, David and I uh, reviewing Andor. Say hello, David. Hello, David. Um, is it David Konami, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yes, yes up, very up, up, down, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So it's just I, for the moment I read it, I just thought of uh, sorry, folks. Uh, we're friends on Facebook, and uh, David had an experience and work with someone and mixed up his name with Konami instead. To be fair, it's it's quite close. I think if you're not paying attention, you know. Did uh, you? Is that, yeah, I, I did. I did say yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like like at least your name sounds like it'd be something else. Mine is like a name Skorka. Like there's just a bunch of Polish people. Uh, that's it, you know. <laughs> At least like Japan has brought things to the entertainment world. Get your game up, Poland! Come on. <laughs> but um, anyway, Super Nintendo Chalmers, how are you today? I <laughs> know <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. I think I've, I've enabled my cheat code, so I'm feeling better today. Good stuff. Yeah, you. Ha- you know, you sort of not really have something named after you. <laughs> just make sure, make it clear. That's not David's actual second name. You know, just, <laughs> I'm not going to say his second name because that's his whole privacy business, but like, <laughs> oh God. Now just forever that. Oh yeah, Lord. that's it. That's, that's, that's all. It's not just putting your name down into like posts. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, folks, uh, Happy to have you back for those who are listening. Uh, we are on episode four of Andor. And we had high predictions on this one, uh, that after, you know, the slower paced first three episodes, this episode might be a little bit more action. Saying that, I don't think it did, but I, it's no bad thing either. No. No, I, th- I don't think so. It's, yeah, it it didn't give us a lot of action per se, but it gave us a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's multiple. We we start and branch out on, our, on uh, with new people that we are being introduced to, uh, some that we expected, and others that are just new to uh, the whole Andor world. Yeah. So it was a lot thrown at us. I I did think, you know, pace pacing is is still good. It it. Would be nice to have, yeah, maybe that slight bit more action or more actual action than just things being thrown at us. There was a bit of a moment at the end after all that that I did feel a little bit like, okay, wait a minute, who is everybody again? That was okay. So this happened. That they happened, threw that a happened. lot of characters at us this episode. And yeah, they. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll get to that. Uh, you know, we start off um, with uh, Luthen and. Andor on his ship and we find out that Luthen was looking for Andor. He has heard about Andor. He wants him on his team for something specifically. Uh, which is a big old heist of like an entire imperial thingamabob. Sector. Something. You know? You know those imperial thing about bobs. Yeah, yeah. Just once they want to take a lot of money out of the empire's um, pocket, which is a big deal now because we were also kind of revealed in this that that McDonald's. Um, um, when I say McDonald's, what do I mean? Uh, I mean the whole private businesses looking after security for the empire. Like the franchise yes. is over. They've been told. Yes. You get to not look at any documents. You are literally about taking documents, moving them on. That's your job now. The private stuff is out of the window. And it makes sense, again, at the beginning of the Empire, for there to be a lot of, like, private businesses to run things on the Empire's behalf, you know? It, yep. This kind of stuff. You know, capitalism. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but talking about that, and talking about... Where is the Empire? Where is the Republic? We got some interesting information about when Andor was a boy, 
and he was on that planet. We were saying, is what age is he? Why are they talking about? We see Empire insignia, but we hear a, a, the Republic's on the way. And you found a little bit of information there that seems to like kind of contradict what we were expecting. Right. I, I found this very interesting looking at the – this is from StarWars.com, yeah. and from their little trivia section. It's not a random uh, Facebook page that claims facts. like Right, which I totally thought it was that somebody had shared until they gave the link, and I found uh, this exact picture. Uh, but yeah, if you look look on Star Wars with the trivia guide for the, for the episodes one through three, they call back to in the – in episode three with the flashbacks that they say, quote – let me just go ahead and read it. That the flashbacks in this episode occur during the later years of the Republic, prior to the start of the Clone Wars, with Marva and Clem worrying about an incoming Republic frigate interrupting their salvage operation. The dead crewers aboard the transport Corsair uh, wear uniforms with a symbol closely related to the eventual Separatist Alliance. Uh, Separatist Alliance travel to Canary will later be restricted by the Empire due to environmental disaster. So yeah, they are, this is prior to the start of Clone Wars, not just prior to Order 66. So it makes uh, sense that he's meant to be six in this, It kind of really, if not younger, but again, it makes no sense the way he looks. And it makes yeah. no sense on why there were Empire logos on the uniforms of the people on that ship, does it? Right, right. Actually, they're, they're yeah, we're, we're uh, separatist logos. Separatist. Right? Sorry, yes, that, yes. That, was, uh, that and that, which is what they're saying. This is all before these. They point out these are the logos of those folks, but this is before Clone Wars. This is before this is occurring. So leaves 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 a lot. And of uh, you know, in Episode Four here, we don't get any more information. We are moving forward, not backwards. So yeah. I'm curious where we'll start picking up more flashbacks and get some more information about that or is that going to be just one of those that that will be in the past they will just move on from that uh, and we'll be left with that just as a that's an open-ended thing yeah i hope not because look i think those days where canon gets a bit mixed up in companies across their franchise is becoming a thing of the past like People are savvy now. You can find out when what was meant to happen and online. Like Marvel, yeah. very rarely messes things up continuity-wise now nowadays. Right. Cause they literally have teams of people looking over scripts and making sure this works out. So I don't think this was an accident. No, know? yeah. So it, what what I'm suspecting may be part of this because even even in this episode as well, Andor throws out an age uh, for when he did another thing we'll get to but i'm wondering is some of this getting kind of loosey-goosey with it because as we saw he had to you know they took him away from from this planet they were they made it that oh he comes from somewhere else trying to hide his identity is his age is is when he speaks of his age is he lying or is he basing it more on if i when from a certain point point yeah. on right is that part of it also that it's it's that that's why when you were seeing these flashbacks and going, but wait, he's so much older or there's these other things going on. It, maybe that might come into play uh, or, you know, we'll, we'll see. Ho hopefully we'll see. Yeah. Cause suppose, it's just too glaring. Yeah. It's too glaring of a, of a thing. I suppose that it would be the cheap answer out, you know, the empire, um, the separatists and the Republic. These are areas of, that are huge, massive areas. Even with faster night travel and with hyperdrive getting everywhere, like empires and like that don't just swap over to the next thing the next day after. Right. You know, like this could be like a, a, a slow changeover. And it explains mm -hmm. why they have these private businesses running empire stuff because this is how the empire can actually spread out without actually spreading that much further, you know? Well, yeah, it absolutely makes sense that that's one of those things that what, what's a smart move, right? You don't, you, you utilize, utilize other resources, yeah. right? If somebody already has some, it's very much even like a, with a business takeover or when you buy, when they buy up some of these companies, right? They're not, if certain companies 
they don't make a certain thing, but they need that in their arsenal. What do they do? They will either, you know, go ahead and spend the R and D and try to do that, or who, who's leading in that particular piece of the industry? Oh, it's this company. Yeah. I'll just buy them because yeah. they're already they got already handled. And then I just leave. And then whether or not they leave them on their own or not, but that's that's a smart move. That's and, you know, expand. and that move, in my mind at least, is definitely has like. Palpatine's fingers all over, fingerprints oh, all over. Like this feels like it's one of his hundreds of plans that he has all organized and set out. Because that's the one thing we have to also keep in mind. Like Palpatine for stupid shit like making the Death Star, and the Death Star is a stupid thing. I mean, that's the whole story of Star Wars. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's intimidating, but it's also fairly easy defeatable once you bring people together like it's it's only power is the fear that it produces it has no power beyond that having a fleet of starships will be far wiser and far more you know efficient really Effective, you yeah. know um so yeah i don't know uh but you know that's the whole story about the sith um praising fear and all this kind of stuff but we'll move on so we see Luthen and Andor, and you know what we said in the beginning. You know that uh, he's really trying to get him on his team, and you know he eventually does. When he says, "Look, I'm going to pay you. You're going to make serious money instead of um, you can sacrifice everything um, for one great thing, or just slowly whittle away at yourself." I think again, this is the talk about how he doesn't like killing. He doesn't like going out there. It seems like every time he does, he whittles a little bit of himself away. And I think this is what he's referencing right. here. Because the thing is, Luther is honest about it. Look, I don't know everything about you, but I know some of it, and I'm imagining the rest. I you love know? that line. I love the, the, here's what I know. He goes, and then he goes, and what I imagine about you is. And I was like, I, I love, well, I, though that that's part of uh, Stellan's, you know, acting and his delivery of yeah. That line, that was something that was like, it, it, that hit me. I love that. Honestly, like, folks, if you haven't watched more of Stalin and Ernest, do. He's a treat. He's just such a mm-hmm. fine, fine actor. And I know people who watched MCU, and I'm not going to show the MCU. I quite like the MCU. But watch him in some other stuff, like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. He is so good in that. Oh, he's in a few BBC programs as well. Definitely yeah. look out for him. But yeah, um, Eventually he convinces and he makes it, we kind of find out very soon, um, when he drops him off that there's more to Luthen than we think. He is not just a rebel or a mercenary who's going around and he makes it very clear to him, it's like, well, he doesn't make it clear, but the woman, um, the, that, um, Andrew gets dropped off with, What's her, what was her name again? Because there was Vel. so many characters introduced. This. The, yeah, I know. I have my yeah. I have my notes here. Vel. That is. Yeah, yeah. So we when when he they land at uh, uh, Aldani Aldani, which is the name of the episode, is the planet they go to. Yeah. Uh, he drops them off to and they were they with in the uh, with uh, Vel. Yeah. Who is yeah helping to lead the whatever this mission is that he's recruited. Uh, yeah. Andor for. And she makes he makes a point that oh she's gonna be furious that you're here, she's not gonna like mm-hmm. that you're here. And I'm gonna be honest, the like <laughs> anxiety person myself and oh no, I would hate to be told that. You know <laughs> 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 You know. Um but yeah, uh and she tells him very quickly, like, we do not talk about Luthen. We've never met Luthen. No one knows about Luthen. Do you understand? Right. And he says and he asks he asks again about Luthen and he's like, No. I, yeah. I met you, I signed you up for this, that's it. Um, and you know, we go off into the mountains and we're told that the Empire's coming to this place. Um, they did a funny thing, they, they didn't wipe out the local culture traditionally as we think the Empire does by just bombing them. They built affordable housing and jobs and the culture just kind of went there. So a lot of that mm-hmm. traditional um, ideas and worship, and we find out, you know, there's this um, thing every six years where there's a sweep of asteroids. You, it's not asteroids, but I'm not going to explain it. How uh, Karis <laughs> explains it, but it's meant to be like a religious thing. It's a tomb, and it, it also creates havoc in space for people to fly around, and that's what they're going to do with that. I get ahead of myself, but um, 
Yeah, we explained that the only reason they can kind of stick out here, and even though even then they probably shouldn't be, is because they pretend to be sort of like hippies, shepherds. basically. You know, yeah. they're nature yeah, people. Yeah, hippies and shepherds and all yeah. that. Yeah, naturists. <laughs> well, not naturists. Yeah. They weren't naked. Yeah. But, but yeah. Uh, and these people that... are grumpy. They're not happy about anything. Oh, man. There was not a smile on any... except like Oh, the one, the one, the one young, or the one young in there. He at least yeah. was kind of, you know. But, but now, real quick, before we, as we dive into, you just start touching upon it, as they are walking back. What about that scene of all just the the two uh, uh, fighters going by? Just yeah, <clears throat> that there was something about that scene. I saw a lot of responses on that one. There was something that just it just oh, it, it made you. It's like you felt it. You felt yeah. that. It's like when you're in the cinema and there's a. There's a loud sound in some, and literally you yes. can feel the vibration in your chest. That's what you feel. Yes. Like, Oof, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think that was a scene, definitely, I'm like, oh, man, I wish I had, like, the full surround sound cranked all the way up just to feel. Yeah. They, they, but they were able to portray that feeling of right there, low, you know, low ground as they yeah. fly by. That was, that, that really did bring about that, like, ooh, the it Empire changes is here. the They're perspective watching. as well. Because usually when we think of um, those ships, I mean, they're never as strong as the X-Wings in our heads. The X-Wings are like battle yeah. tanks compared to them. And they're basically like mosquitoes are annoying that the rebels are trying to beat off. That's what they are. But we forget, like, okay, so in canon, technically, they are cheaper made. And that's why the Empire bought them instead of, like, the X-Wings at the time, which were actually built by a separate company that was trying to sell it to the Empire. And the Empire, you know, we'll go for cheap and lots. Um, right. But we they forget, like, they are a sign of oppression. They are powerful things that will destroy anything that isn't an X-Wing. Like, an X-Wing is like, literally like a muscle car. You know, <laughs> that's what this is. Whereas, <laughs> uh, you know, whereas like, X-Wings, I guess, very speedy Fiat cars, like Ferrari-esque. You know, and right. sure, if you had those two cars battling against each other, I'll go for the muscle car. <laughs> but for everyone else, you mess up, and I think yeah, you're right. It's it was very intimidating, and I loved seeing mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I think that was that was a nice touch. It gave it, we in this ep this episode we finally get to see uh, the empire, right? Whereas in the first three we were seeing the McDonald's Corporation, as you call, yeah. it, uh, which I love. But now we are being introduced to the empire, and so now we get the taste of you know. I think that's that was a great way we were now introduced to here's the empire. They this is the empire we know. And let's go to the empire a bit because we touched off them just basically giving out to these local, you know, Egypts who don't know what to do. Um, they're a very different sort of empire. These are like the clerical officers there to do the day to day running of places that ta- they've taken over. This isn't the navy. This isn't the navy that's brought into this. Like they, he made they made a point like they're there to keep the peace, and he went excellent. Not what we're here for. We're medics, mm-hmm. and he says it's. A very interesting way he had it thought out, didn't you think? I love, yeah, I love the the description. When we, so what we, when we go back to the scenes where they we go back to, it's Coruscant. I love the fact of so they they show that Coruscant has become what you know with the Empire is the as a, as a hub of the Empire, which makes sense. It, the looking looking at how the they're the Imperial Security Bureau. Yeah, uh, the ISP, as we've heard referenced previously as well, this was cool to see. This is who they really are. Uh, like you said, I love you yeah, that that explanation of yeah, we're the mechs. We find the disease and we stamp them out and find you know how to stamp them out and you know get rid of them. Mm. Uh, that was that was a his delivery of that. The um, it was interesting oh, to see Coruscant have... as well, by the way, because. You know, throughout the Empire at that, because we don't really see Coruscant in the movies during the original trilogy at all. Um, it's, it's right. not a thing there. Um, we see it during the Clone Wars. Um, mm-hmm. and we see Coruscant. It, it, you know, it's a city world, but they are like unsavory corners of it and it's a little bit muddy and dirty in parts, but, by the time of the Empire, it seems like it's a golden bastion of civilization. Like, everything's very clean. Now, don't get me wrong. There are, there are still flats. There are still people who are, 
who aren't the top brass, but you know, you got to keep the cleaners nearby. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's the idea. Um, and everything is very posh and clean, but at the same time, uh, because we meet, uh, we're going to get, um, back to her, um, uh, Mothma. Um, oh. yeah. Um, she talks to her husband and she's like, those people cut off supply lines or uh, like supply routes and now they are people starving and it's going to be famine and death and we're having a lovely nice meal over here and laughing over a carcass and that's what why I think Coruscant is seen as such a pretty light in this it it is mm-hmm. perfect because here's the thing Palpatine needs to make sure that the servants just underneath them the bureaucrats and all that are on his side. He has to spoil the hell out of him. Because he's not out there going, Ah, oh, the Seth, lightning force, listen to me. That's not a thing. But it's it's mm-hmm. all a secret police thing because, you know, we find out Mothma is very much being looked over. Like, people get, like, swapped off with new drivers to keep an eye on what mm-hmm. people are doing. All this kind of stuff. So, everything is nice and clean and lovely and everyone's happy. But there is a dark tone of, you know, espionage and like she says right. she's under siege yeah i loved that when they then when that happened when that came about of us meeting meeting mothma finally and that bringing about that there is a lot of uh, espionage yeah that's actually that's exactly it there there's so much going on that it, it's hard to tell who's who's on your side and who's not yeah so it makes it that, that kind of i liked the way that was presented because we, we know that that is the case and that's what, you know, was hard with the rebellion about trying to, you know, you're trying, trying to form that, that, but you've got the empire, you know, basically has bought everybody or how ha- you don't know who they've bought, who is mm-hmm. genuinely just fully up, up their ass with it and who is just whatever. The empire is built with it's who you yeah. know mentality. Like if you are an uncle so. who's up there, you're going to get a job. You know, right. And that's always, and that's been an interesting thing of in, in the books and on shows and such is seeing, seeing that. But I loved, I love the way it's presented here. It added, uh, again, it was just one more, one of those things. I feel like the writing, the, the actual dialogue in the, in this show has been pretty good because yeah. of, and, and particularly because you've got the, uh, the right actors and actresses giving these lines that it just adds something. It really added with her. When, when she was talking about it, the way she was presenting it, it added a bit more. It's like, I know that goes on, but yeah, there's something about the way she presented it that just made yeah. it even more. It gave me a little bit more fear, you know, yeah. uh, for, for them. Cause we find out, um, Stan's ca- character, Luthen, is like a high class historian, um, like an art like dealer. Art dealer. Like that's his thing. He likes selling very posh things to posh people and i i love the scene like so he you know he puts on a wig he puts on like golden rings so he comes from this very grubby guy he doesn't want to mm-hmm. talk to the old fellow on the bus to this oh welcome miss mothma <laughs> and you you see he, pr- he practices it on the ship before he goes out and it's such a lovely insight you know i love that was that again. That was that was beautiful. I love that. Yeah, he's first. He's he's, he's dropped after he's dropped Cassian off. He's flying back to to Coruscant. And yeah, I love that you see him. Okay, he's putting on his co- you know his costume, puts on a wig, puts on these rings and this yeah different clothes that are yeah now much much nicer. And he, and he has and all of a sudden you just see he literally acts. You see him flip up a smile and do all. And he's just alone in his ship, but he's trying to convert himself back to. You know, okay, I'm putting on the act. And as a real actor. He puts on a personality um, like he puts on clothes. Yeah. yeah, and I love that. I was like, that was a cool insight, right? I love, this is again, what this show is kind of showing us, these types of things. It feels like it's going a little bit more in depth or behind the scenes of these things. Things that we know, this is how people would prob- probably, oh yeah, we, we just, in our minds, we're imagining it. We're seeing it here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, it's, and it's just neat, but particularly with, with somebody like Stellan doing it just makes yeah. it all, all better. But I loved that it seems like he seems like, oh yeah, it's a little jovial old man, old man kind of feeling, you know, like you're like, does he play Santa Claus at the mall on the week? You know? <laughs> he... Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it, it's, and you know, I think it, like his, his scenes with Mothma in the shop were obviously fantastic where they, they both are performing and it drops mm-hmm. immediately when they get to the back rooms and the secretary's obviously in on it and she like distracts, um, 
the driver to look at like some ancient coins and all this kind of stuff. Um, but did you now? Did you pay attention to the shop? There were a lot of things in there, and I literally, when I was watching, it was like, Dave was going to have a fun time with this one. <laughs> there, there were and there were several things I missed. I had to. Uh, I just knew like several things there because again, this was this episode was things, not just a lot of name dropping. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yes, and. Uh, but there's a particular one at uh, the 30 minute, 32 second mark, I believe. You see when they're in the back yeah. and you see there's items that are frozen in carbonite. And there's a particular item that you go, wait a minute. It's 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 a whip. It looks a lot like it's Indiana Jones whip frozen oh. in carbonite. OK, that's a good damn reference. That was. I, yeah. I, and it was funny is the way they, they show the, the shot, it's in focus just enough. And you, cause you look at, it, you're like, that just seems weird. But if you look at, it, you're like, that's Indiana Jones whip. That's what that, that's totally what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's very, uh, it, it, was, it was a good little yeah. touch. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so yeah, they do the whole, Oh, I need to get my husband something. And he says, Oh, well, look, I'll show you something more peaceful stuff I have in the back because her husband's more into war stuff and, all that. Uh, we very quickly get the impression her husband's just a useless dickhead. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it, like uh, she, she's there for information. Uh, what's going on? He he's getting information from her, and he says, "Look." Uh, he comes out after saying, "Oh, give this to your husband. If he doesn't like it, you can always return it." Obviously, making it clear that they can return it and go back. Mm-hmm. And then when she does later on. Talk with her husband. Her um, her husband says, "Oh, where's my gift?" And it's like, "I'm returning it." Oh, you're always returning it. You're no fun. So that's also something I like. But she's done this a lot of times, Not and that's I, how they communicate I, by buying things yep. and returning it. You know. Um, yep, I, I like that. Was that was a little sly way of, of things. Yeah. Now uh, he's useless. I. I he, he's oh my gosh. Well, go on. You wonder how how useless is he, right? In in the whole mix of things, of course, and the espionage, uh, I'm wondering what how will they present him further? What 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 stories might unlock with him? Is is he truly as useless as we say, and just is just stuck in the whole, you know, wants to be around the the high high flutin, you know, high high society, and just wants to eat and drink, uh, or is there something a little more nefarious going on? Right, yeah. and that's why he is—is is he very much aware about what she's up to, but just pr- playing stupid, right? Will we see some of that? And because you do notice, did you, the when she's there and she says, "Oh, we're having the dinner tonight," and here's a list of people I've invited, and she names off several people, uh, one of whom is uh, Sly Moore, who is someone who actually is very close to at least in previously anyways with what's been written so again this could be disney could change this but sly is known to be very close to palpatine in fact she's she's force sensitive as well and actually knew of palpatine's true identity pre order 66 that was the one uh she was in the opera with um palpatine and anakin yeah. wasn't she she was it was, it was that, that, think, uh, she says hey. and apparently at one time a lover of palpatine i believe I think it's uh, yeah. yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, she's cl-. so that brings about you know these like these are inter- it's an interesting choice to call out specifically uh, that character yeah. right that that's one of them that he's like oh well these are just old friends yeah. so okay he's obviously close with them that you know it it, it makes me think yeah. well, when there's I say going to be more to it. when I say use I don't say he uses as in bad for the plot I I think oh, it's no, going to no. be very interesting with um what's going on but he definitely seems like he's not going to help the rebellion out in future uh, oh, I, absolutely. I, yeah uh she, she then well we've might never be seen anything could, see i think right i think there was an organized mar- uh, wedding here i know that's such mm-hmm. a jump uh to assume but when Sh- mothma is in the shop talking away says oh your people have such a rich tradition and she goes, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's certainly a tradition. <laughs> like mm-hmm. she, there seems to be powers that she's probably not too fond of. And I wonder if maybe this is one of those things that she, like her people have arranged marriages and she just ended up being, because 
we don't see Mothma showing up that much more. There were a lot of deleted scenes in the prequel stuff. And wow. we see her, which is a shame. There was some really cool stuff mm-hmm. with, um, Padme and literally building the first group of senators that kind of, you know, and yeah. lots of interesting cultural things there as well. And they just cut all that stuff out. And it's such a shame because they even hinted at Padme potentially using Anakin against his will, uh, to mm-hmm. like, control um Palpatine but apparently they just didn't want to show Padme as being like an interesting character or something. Anyway, <laughs> uh she came of an interesting character in Clone Wars, so fuck it. Um <laughs> But yeah. So I definitely look the re- reason I said we don't see her often in later ones is every time we see her we don't really see her husband nearby. Right, that was something I, I, I haven't looked to see. What's uh, do we do we know what's what is the pre pre Disney canon of 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 her husband? But I, I, in this case here, what will what will they present with it and kind of explain? Will there that makes me think that might be something that the series will touch upon, right? Probably yeah. a betrayal of some kind or something that that even more so shows why. Yeah, she's off on her own writing this, writing the show. Yeah. She's not, she does not have him anywhere nearby or mentioned. And I mean, I think she makes it very clear as well. Like she says she feels like she's under siege. I think she's mm-hmm. very close to like stepping away from Coruscant and joining the rebels full on. Like she is, she's probably been there for years and years and it's closing in on her. She's not going to be safe right. for much longer. So she's, I wouldn't be surprised if this series will have her leave Coruscant. Right. I'm wondering if, will they, will they show, I'm wondering, will they take the, she leaves before or will they lead into where, uh, I guess they can't, they can't go terribly close to, uh, uh, Rogue One or they can go, you know, right up until, but, uh, where basically right to that point or just after right where it goes, you know, Rogue One right into New, uh, New Hope. And remember at the beginning of New Hope, it stated that the Senate has officially been disbanded. Yes. Right. That's the end of the Senate right there. So we know at that point, yeah, obviously her position would definitely be, you know, whatever her cover yeah. is of as in the Senate, she's, she's gone already. But like I said, yeah, will they, will we see her stick around and, and just find her way out or will she, you know, finally leave? And yeah, I think she probably has left before a new hope and before Rogue One. I, I, I'll bet on that easily. Um, I, I, I think we'll see it in this show. I think we'll see her mm-hmm. turn her back on her husband, who's basically an enemy. Uh, I, look, we don't know much about her husband yet, but he, mm-hmm. he's pretty old. You know, there's a saying in Germany that if there is a table full of uh, people and one Nazi sits there and everyone else sits with them, it's a table full of Nazis. Yeah. You know, and there is some truth to that as well. Uh, yep. s- but, yeah. I bet you. I wonder. Wonder the will we see? Yeah, will she? Uh, will will we see one of those little classic? Um, sh- sh- you know, they they are actually off, awfully high up in places. And she's like, oh, I don't know what happened. He went over. He just he tripped. He yeah, slipped yeah, on his yeah. line and just up oh, over he went. That's a shame, right, droids? <laughs> they really live in the lap of luxury as well. Like, yep, places stunningly gorgeous and tacky at the same time. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll stay on Coruscant for a second because someone else has gone to Coruscant uh, to live with Mammy. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I love uh, love a see- scene. A uh, little, uh, little Cyril. Now that yeah. that uh, the ISB has officially said, you guys are out. You guys are are incapable and incompetent, and you're out. Yeah. And we see him make his way tail through- underneath his legs. You know. <laughs> And that was uh, seeing the the apartments of Coruscant, so to speak. Yeah, and just how that, that started looking. Where now we're starting to see a little bit more of that again. That that where yeah. the help are, it felt, yeah. right? That dr- slightly dreary. That everything looks exactly the same, and you almost go, "How the heck does he even find her place?" Because I would get lost even with the num- a numbering scheme because it all looks identical. Yeah, they just have uh, what are the mouse, mouse droids called again? Um, they're oh yeah the. the uh... You you just read one of them for uh, the day, and you just fo- say, "I need to go to this house," and they just drive ahead, and you just run after them. <laughs> yep, that's always kind of how I imagine what they, they're useless on big starships as well. They just help you get around places. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, 
again, they do the interesting thing. Uh, so Cyril has this quite posh English, um, like officer of the empire sort of vibe to him. And mm-hmm. his mother is quite, Hey, what you looking at? And, and quite mm-hmm. a very working class English accent again. So he's yeah. actually probably hiding his real accent. He probably that, grew up with a more yeah. common accent and he didn't want to be common. He didn't want to be like his mother. He didn't want to be so low like them. And I think a lot of teenagers have feelings like that as sometimes they're like, Oh, mm-hmm. I don't want to be like my family. And he kind of stepped away from that, but she gives him a big slap and then yeah. hugs him. <laughs> she clearly cares about him, you know? Um, yeah, and she... that was such a that was such a good like it was such a short blip of, yeah. of a C right of just a moment, so which means okay we're going to see more more with him and uh, that but I loved that fact yeah, it gave it gave much of oh so he's not always been this prim and proper yeah. so that that's why he's try he's doing so try hard yeah. that's why he, he changed the want... universe uh, yeah. his uniform he uniform. changed himself mm-hmm. to fit better in and that includes his accent his personality. Because he doesn't yep. want to be a low, and maybe that's the whole point that you mentioned. Like the apartments are the working class. Mm-hmm. He has lived in Coruscant. He has seen the splendor that the higher classes have, and he he wants to be like them. And he doesn't yep. want to be like his poor mother. You know, he wants to be part of their world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of white men who wouldn't be against that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, there's not much else with him, really, in this episode. Nope. Uh, so, nope, that was it. So I guess we have to talk about Andor. Um, <laughs> Andor is going overnight over hills. Uh, he still has a bit of a plasma burn from being shot at, but he's all right. Um, you notice one thing before he leaves, before he, he goes off with uh, with Vel, that... Luthen you know, tells him, you need to come up with a name. And so the name he chooses is his father's name, Clem. Ah. He's going by him going by Clem. He's using, well, his father, well, Eric. Well, yeah, I was about to say father, which father, yeah. The, 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 the you know, uh, Marvin's uh, father, husband. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I thought that, that was an interesting little touch, which it's, I think we we're going to see more about that when, you know, because Luthen mentioned the previous episode, you know, they hung your father, you know, out there and blah, blah. So it makes me think we're going to see more about there's there's an attachment again. Maybe yeah. there's going to be more. Could he? There's going to be some other guilt association we're going to see of a story about him and his father, or his you know his surrogate father. <laughs> this sounds like such a nitpick, and it's really not. But movies do this a lot, where they'll name themselves after someone they cared about. But mm-hmm. we already know that the Empire and the people who work for the Empire have records of him from years ago about his mother and his father, yeah, and it's nice. like. Like, it'll be Cyril. It'll be him, like, crying about being kind of poor at his mother's house, living, like, sleeping on the sofa, and he's going to be looking through the documents that he's not meant to look at, and went, wait a second, there's this guy who got captured or named on the mission that's coming ahead. I know where he is. I'm going to go out by myself, or I'm going to get in contact with that general lady yep. who is really angry um, because there's a glass ceiling even in the Empire. I say even in the Empire, but as if that's a big... Fo- <laughs> you know, the Empire might just enslave plants, oh. but I always thought it's equality <laughs> for women, you know? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> we, we, know, we know that the, the Empire is striving for... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do they just have equality drives for the Empire? Yes, like, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, didn't, didn't we see, we, we know there's, there's Empire Day. They're also big supporters of pride. I mean, of course. Yeah. We, I we mean, know that. <laughs> it was also nice to see that, you know, there weren't just white people working for the Empire. There mm-hmm. was, you know, a few, um, back generals. Um, you know, and I think it's good to see that people of all races can be fascist assholes. Um, <laughs> exactly. It's all, know? it's all equal opportunity. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, uh, but yeah, I have a feeling that's gonna catch up on him, his name, but. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I always wonder why they do this in films, because it always feels like, it's an easy way to find you, what are you doing? Like, just call yourself, I don't know, Patrick Starfish, there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah. She, uh, introduces, uh, him to the team. 
who are absolutely thrilled to see him because <laughs> it's not like they're, this is a last minute thing just before the heist that they've been working on for weeks, if not months, um, that poor Karis has been <laughs> modeling figurines for, for the diorama. <laughs> um, <laughs> The only person that seems to be nice in this entire... Because, like, you know, usually when you do these camp things, you have, like, different personalities and you kind of learn about them. But they all just mm-hmm. seem like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. You know? I like some of the cool stuff. Uh, we see the weapons they use. Very clearly, like, not sci-fi weapons. They are... Yeah. Project- like these case. are guns from <laughs> nowadays, here on Earth. And they yeah. just added a few things to. It. And to be fair, that's never been a big thing. Like Han Solo's blaster, um, little handgun. Like that's just a World War Two gun with a few like scopes and all glued onto it. Mm-hmm. You know. So if people give out too much, but I kind of liked that. Oh yeah, a bit more robust. Like maybe we don't have the money for because we even were kind of told that um, traveling at warp speed is not that cheap. Like, you have to get a power source and that kind of stuff. And I thought that was right. quite fascinating. Yeah, there's res- yeah. It's resources. There's problems with that. Speaking of Han Solo, did you catch... catch there's Again, this this episode was full of little drops, little nuggets, little things of, of references. Early on, when, when Cassian's talking with Luthen, he mentions that he fought Mimbin. Mimbin was where, if you were watching Solo... You'll see that was where Han Solo fought as well, and that's where he was. Where uh, uh, Beckett, you know, says, "Oh, he's a deserter," and he got him thrown in. That's where he meets into that lockup yeah. with, with Chewie. Uh, so that was one of their little you know references there about Mimbin is is the battles of that. Which also timeline wise, I think he said he was sixteen when that happens. Is that there could be that there there is a oh they could have been they would have been actually there around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine it would be Nesbin because I mean. Han and him look pretty much the same age. Maybe Han's a, a little bit older, but not not by much. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, yeah. Okay. I like it. And again, it's one of those things I've been thinking about. I I like that we're tying some of the plans together. I know people say it's a galaxy. Why do we have to keep on reference to other things? Like, it's an empire within a galaxy. You know, it, right. it's it's really not an entire galaxy of worlds. You know. Um, yeah. Uh, we have a man on the inside, uh, L- Lieutenant Gorn, I believe it was. Yes, Lieutenant Gorn. Was and at least he was delighted to see. Oh wait, no, he didn't like Andor either. No, no. no. Um, <laughs> um, I was. I we at one stage at the beginning we see Karis and he's kind of ha- he falls asleep um, when he's meant to be on duty, uh, mm-hmm. keep an eye out, and I'm not sure. If they're referencing the same book that I thought they referenced, but there's a book called Roll of Thunder. Hmm. And it's, um, about the cotton picking years, um, for, uh, in America where plantations were starting to be owned by, um, people of color. Like it was there, their farms, but it was still a hard time. And he says, like, I'm not going to tell her. You are going to tell her that she fell asleep. And that's, it's, it's literally like a line from that book. And I just like, mm. that's an interesting take, but you know, who knows? Uh, folks, let me know if they were referencing Roll of Thunder. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, this is last minute. They did make, she did keep making the point that they had room for one o- no, other person. They ha- always had an extra say, Oh no, but we had two things, um, f- as backup. Said, no, but it was clear we always need another person. They have seven people on this team, you know? It's not going to go well. I, like they mentioned, it's a suicide mission. So that's the point. It's meant to be a suicide mission because they never think anyone like us would do it. It's like, yeah, because it's a suicide mission. Yeah. <laughs> um, we also we see Andor. Andor is also given um, a certain type of crystal, a sky crystal. Um, yes. A kyber blue, crystal, even. blue blue kyber crystal. Yeah. Yes, um, that he was said he had to return to Luthen. Just, I just thought I'd bring that up because that's an interesting one. I, that I was don't... interesting, which I'm worried about. You know, he took it off and then he pocketed it. He had, it was a necklace yeah. he was wearing, and then he pockets it, which they made too much of a point of. And like, yeah. oh, are we going to see this is going to get lost, or 
is it going to reveal something? I think the big thing that's going to happen is, again, this is complete hypothetical guessing. And I'll say this thing, this episode, it felt a lot shorter than the other ones were. I felt Even like one... it was, it was about 50 minutes. So it was still uh, about average. It was... Maybe it's because I've been spoiled, but it literally felt like when it finished, I was like, what? Is it not like in 10 more minutes? I don't know. Maybe it's the pacing was more interesting, more information. That's, that's why I say I think it, it still had a lot going on. So yeah. the pacing felt faster. But I have a feeling that, uh, Karis is probably going to die because he's the only character we've been shown so far that people are like, he's nice. You mm-hmm. know, he likes he's making nice. figurines. Um, and then I think yep. Luthen is probably going to die. I think that's the, probably the whole deal about Luthen giving the crystal to him says, I want that back. And oh, I yeah. have a weird feeling, and this is a complete guess. I think by the end of the season, Mothma is going to be chased down by the Empire, and Luthen is able to get her out at the price of his at own price. life. That, that's one of the things I think I, I was speculating already as we, when it was showing him as, as one of the characters, and once we saw that, yeah, he was supposed to be that, it, it seems like that's a pretty likely case because at the beginning like uh and when we first meet him we get the impression or he's trying to sell the impression that he's a one of the bad cops and he's he doesn't care about mercenaries rebels it's all the same but look we've watched star wars we've had han solo you know like these guys that say they don't care but clearly do you know um and i wouldn't even say luther is a scoundrel like Han Solo is, he's actively trying to do good things, and I, I don't think he's making mega books from Mothma. Like, I don't think that's the case. Because, again, would this guy who was like an art historian, art seller, shave his hair down, get a wig for himself to, like, gain a new identity so he can make money on this? I don't buy. It. I, I, I think Luthen is the guy we see when he's around Andor. He is not the guy in the shop. I not think that anymore. Was, that was, yeah, that was definitely the point. Whether, whether he was ever like that at all, or yeah. he's, this is the act he's put on, is very much the case. Yes. Yeah. I, I would say he is probably born into privilege to a certain extent. I think anyone who lives in Coruscant has either been born into it or has worked for a family or something like that. Or, again, it's the help, you know? Mm-hmm. But... I think everyone is kind of frozen at their part in society um, yes. throughout this place. So I think Luthen was probably around during the Republic years. He probably was an art theater. I don't think he was as prestige before, probably. I think it's when all the posh fascist stats would come to power that he had to sell a bit of that character. But yeah. yeah. Really interesting character. I, I really want to learn more about him. Do you, is there anything else you have to say more about Andor on planet side where he's around the campfire and they're looking at a few things, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. No, he, yeah. I like, you know, when he's, when he's sitting there and he's watching, he's observing, you know, he's, he's observing everybody, but it's also because everybody's observing him. Yeah. They're just staring at him as he's trying to eat, but it, it feels like, you know, he, he's getting this like, He's trying to sort things out. He's trying to figure out how to get out of this alive. Yeah. You don't get that that feeling. But I love that you know when Gorn comes to him with the the tablet. Hey, you know how to use one of these. Yeah. I, I was like, he's going to say, "You got games on that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of that going on. I I really like. Who do you think these people are? Do you think they're resistance fighters? Do you think they're out to get money? I have it like we get the vibe from uh Karis that there is a cause and he only trusts people who follow the cause. And he sees that in Andor, I think. He seems to feel yes. like Andor is for the cause. And again, I was kinda of mentioning this in the other podcast with uh Power and uh, the Rings of Power. Um Karis is kind of the virtuous heart in the story. He sees, he is telling the truth of the good in people. So he mm-hmm. sees Andor, and we should pay attention to it. We know what happens with Andor afterwards. If, if we didn't, if Kara says so, Andor is a good guy, mm-hmm. in the story-wise we're told he is the good guy. 
follow him. He's all right. You know? Yeah, this uh, this doesn't seem to be mercenaries for hire for money uh, kind of deal. Like, I would have thought that with one or two of the characters, if they, but the way everybody else is, particularly with, like you said, is what Luthen and even I believe uh, Vel, I think, makes a comment as well. It's basically about that you know, they've got to be in uh, the cause. It's more of the cause. So you might you might have that. Yeah, one or two of the guys there are basically that was how they got them into it. Was it's it's for this payday right as, yeah. we, as we discover in this particular case here this one is a heist or that is what's being framed yeah. and we might discover it's not but it's framed as we are it's a payroll heist yeah. so it could explain why you might have one or two of the guys who are a little bit harder and seem like that kind of mercenary type that they might have gotten them in on saying well knowing that they need muscle all right so you're going to have some of those yeah. kinds of people but everybody else, particularly when you've got Lieutenant Gorn, who is obviously, you know, he, he's on, he's with the Empire, but he's actually, you know, here helping them. Yeah. So that's obviously you, you've got a cause yeah. that's happening here. So these are these are more, these are the resistance. Right? Luthen makes a big form. point though that then Luthen and um, sorry, Vel make a both point that they're not happy with the ideas of mercenaries at all. They make, yes. they have an argument over like this is not what we, what we do, and eventually Luthen just puts his foot down. Like you're taking him, that's it, do it. You know, because mm-hmm. I'd say he's basically bankrolling it and giving the information. He's obviously I, he is in charge. Like he's yep. letting her be in charge where she is, but he's in charge of the entire well, operation. It's, it's more like he's using. It, it feels like yeah, he's bankrolling it, and he is provide like he he was even saying because I was going to shut you down if you you know with with this plan. So it feels like he's recruited her, if 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 not, you know, for the, for the cause already. Yeah, that's that's the impression we get. So yeah, but he's that shadowy figure behind the scenes. He's trying to stay the yeah. shadowy figure behind the scenes to keep so that way he can keep on doing this. I kind of like the like this part of me that says, "Oh, I want to find out more about him. I want to find out more about his history, where he's from, what makes him tick." But honestly, that I think there's a really obvious answer that I kind of love the idea of. He is an art historian, mostly of war. He has seen war come and go and come and go on cyclical routes, and he doesn't want to be a part of it. He does not like what the Empire is, purely because he has Mm -hmm. seen history. He is educated, you Mm -hmm. know? So I think I, I, if they don't explain anything else, I'm okay with that just being the answer. I agree. I can yeah. see that. We don't. We, we don't. We don't need to have. It, 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 we would like to, but we don't need to have. But the things. I, but I'm I, sure there's. Stuff. I want to see stories where we have the common man, mm-hmm. where it's just someone who maybe because they studied or because they just have sound morality that they've learned to grow over time. And they just say, no, I don't need a big spiel of, oh, she was a child to this person and revealed all like these things are fine and look this is what the main story line of star wars is about that's it's grand it's fair enough being from skywalkers and then being raised <laughs> by you know counselors not fair enough and look it, it's a big op- operatic thing that's what star wars is a space opera and i love it mm-hmm. for that but this more like i mean i say that my favorite character when i was a kid watching star wars was han solo and who's mm-hmm. more feet on the ground, common dude, who, yeah, he does a, a few fucked up things. But you tell me if there is a more exciting moment in the original Star Wars trilogy that doesn't give you a tingle up your back, that when Luke is in the trench and you suddenly hear a hand coming in from above, oh. there is nothing more powerful in the all of Star Wars. And I will fight people on this. It's true. Like, I remember me and my brother, like, jumping on sofas when he did it because we were waiting for mm-hmm. it, you know? Because we were like, Han, don't go, that's not... And then he comes back and like, hey, kid. And it's like, ah! Oh! Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and that's what Star Wars is. Being. And I guess that's what the re- rebellion is about as well. Yeah, Princess Leia mm-hmm. runs and all that, but it's mostly, like, just people. Just exactly ordinary people seeing the Empire and saying, no, not mm-hmm. here, not anywhere get out so i appreciate that about this show and i hope it sticks to that as well i hope we don't find out that every person has to have this big 
moment in their emotional life where they suddenly saw the truth. It's like, oh, I was a, you know, I was daughter to, uh, in the Empire to someone, and then I saw, I think oh, everything was nice, and then I saw things were not nice. I don't want that. I want people who just mm -hmm. have struggled, have seen people they love just suffer for no reason and say, like, I'm going to just do what I fucking can. I'm tired. I'm sick, mm -hmm. but I blow you. And as much as I was mocking the guys at the camp, saying they just don't like anything, if you were in the Empire, if you were trying to survive, yeah. you'd be suspicious of everyone and you'd be pissed off. Yeah. I you think know? that that was that's exactly... That, that's one of the things. This this show is capturing, like I said, the, right, the, the dialogue and the acting are capturing what I think matches very much for what the characters and the situations they are trying to convey. You you nailed it right there. The guy, everybody at the campsite was there. There was more to it than just the grumpy, you know, this, the grumpy, oh, we don't like him, da, 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 you know, yeah. and it, it, it came off as that exactly said they're, they're tired. They are suspicious because of their risk of their lives. This is essentially, you know, you're going to be seen as a traitor. There's yeah. not, there's no, there's no two ways about it. You're essentially being a traitor. Yeah. So, which is like you know the worst thing. Yeah. So you're you're gonna get killed. So you're you're risking your life and everything about this. There's no getting your way out of this. This and, isn't. There's nothing you can do. And again, this is this story is very a story against um, anti-imperialism in general because mm -hmm. they don't like mercenaries. Why? Because yeah. mercenaries can be bought by someone else. If there's yep. enough money, they will just betray you. And. They also don't like the local police force because it's basically a guild of mercenaries that's mm -hmm. running the shop. Like, I, wow. I don't, I'm not going to get all like political for people. Don't worry. But this is literally pointing out to um, like this idea of, Oh, it's fine. Look, we like, I'm all for people. Look, if we're living in a very capitalist society, we do all over the place mm -hmm. and it's hard to live outside of it. And I don't blame people who just try to make it from day to day. Same, absolutely same. It's a pain in the ass. We're tired and pissed off. All right. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you cannot pursue things in society which hurt society and say, oh, well, I just want to get paid. Don't do, you know, for example, don't become a cop in certain precincts, maybe, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> but, but this is, this is what the story is telling. I'm not trying to like make a, like agenda out of this. This is the story of this show. It is a story about people taking control, people t going along with it because they get financial power out of it. You know, this is that is what Andrew is about, isn't it? And Andrew is all mm -hmm. about because they make a big point to, uh, to Andrew himself. Like, do you want to keep cutting bits of yourself off, or do you actually want to change things in one foul sweep? Yeah, <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he really, I, I loved that. I know we're coming back to that line, but it's like that was, that was a really cool line because it exactly defined I think, him of of what we were seeing of him, and then ultimately what we know he does. Yeah, yeah, and he, like that, that's, that is know. he. Yeah, you know, he literally he he gets killed by helping to get the plans yeah. out. It's like that's yeah, he does it. Yeah. He if ever a grand thing. And it's the thing I just mentioned before I I sh I shut up anyway. Um we have we I know I'm I'm the person who's saying they're grumpy, but I'm thinking we're going to have a lot of people in the comment section saying, "Oh, everyone's so dreary, everyone's so grumpy." Keep in mind these people are pissed off, like I mentioned before, they are tired. But there are also people who want to go home at the end of this and run into their children's arms, who want to hold the people they love. They want to have a drink with their friends in a world that's fairer to them. Of course, they're pissed off. They don't want to be out here in the bushes, you know, playing with dioramas, except he, he wants to play with dioramas. That's another <laughs> thing. But you know what I mean? Like, yep. they have a reason to be the way they are. Some of them even make a point that they kind of, Talk how sad it is that local cultures are being destroyed, not even by violence anymore, by just financially, like you're better off, give up some of your cultural elements and you're more likely to have a plate of food on your table every day, you know? Assimilation. Yeah, it is. It is assimilation. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just my point. I think this episode is very good. Like, honestly, talking about it makes me appreciate it more now. I'm realizing that's mm -hmm. that I didn't see it first. 
Um, yeah. I, I'm in agreement. Yeah, I think that there there's a lot of things that touched upon that, and is is continuing to touch upon exactly like what you said. That's been Star Wars, and this one this one's good. Like this is more adult in yes. nature for that reason, right? We aren't just having blaster fights and and yeah. lightsabers and pew pew and which is fun and and, and enjoyable. But, and, and, you know, and speeder chases and things, right? Um, but we instead are getting more to a story of, 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 of humanity, really, yeah. right? Uh, and that, I think that's, that's what works well. This, this show is very much needed. I think it's, it's a nice palate cleanser in a way yeah. from all the other stuff. And it's timing. I think it will fit very well by we'll have this. This will go through the rest of the year. And then what beginning of the next, next year should be, uh, Ahsoka. I don't know if there's anything. Oh, there, there are a few other little little projects, right? Or not little, but the I think what the animated stuff they're supposed to be happening as well. But I think this is a good break and giving us actually something, meaty. you know, meaty. Yeah, much yeah, meaty. Yeah. Yeah, it's meaty. It's a little bit depressing in a way. It is, depressing. but it's kind of meaty. It's it not, actually is depressing. Yeah. It's a depression you understand it because mm-hmm. it, do you know why it's depressing? Because I'm not saying Real. we live in the exact same environment, but they are similar tones. It, 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 exactly the know? tone the tones are exactly they're very relatable or at very least understandable yeah uh so that, that's i think it's it's very good um lucas i always like to think of uh, george lucas when we're, we're watching any of these new movies and these new shows i always say i wonder what he'd make of this now i think he'd say it's it needs a bit more action <laughs> because yeah. george lucas did like action but on his message of star wars and how he what he feels about, you know, like the war in Iraq and all that kind of stuff back in the day. Yeah. I think a lot of his morality and a lot of his vision is in this show. Very, very much so. I think they have taken what he started and, and are, are, are applying it properly. Again, it's one of those uh, things that when you're a kid, you watch the prequels, you, you, you kind of got Lucas's message, but in a, in a kiddie way. Now we're, you know, in our thirties. And we're watching Andor, and is now saying like, okay, we we told you this back then. You kind of got it. Now we're really going to start talking about it, you know. Mm-hmm. And now you're old enough to really understand. Yeah. The so yeah, the one thing I, I'm thinking of it to in, in as we're approaching about the uh, the end of this, and actually there's one more thing I do want to get back yeah. to from early on, but regarding the ending. Is probably honestly now my only, really my only complaint on the show now, and it is their endings are very weird. They are stopping at weird points. Mid sentence stuff, isn't it? Mid sentence stuff. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's yeah. it's very much like this part felt like there should have been. It went faded. I thought they were going to get one more cut of something That's... else, and then we would, and it just end. And it's like I, I felt I was I, I was left. To go, uh, yeah, I felt like I was like mid breath and going. Uh, um, okay, so I didn't get a full breath of air in. I just felt... That's exactly uh, it, though, because uh, I was mentioning it. Like It felt like there was 10 more minutes left to go. I don't think... Maybe yeah. you're right. It's not a matter of that the length felt different. It's just like where it stopped when it's just like... And they're talking mm-hmm. around the fire. And, uh, okay. And, yeah. and, okay, fair enough. And the, and the previous episodes did that, too. I mean, like, I think the third episode ended okay. But yeah. even the first two, like, first one, even, it ended at just a weird... I'll be real with you. That, that I don't remember. Like, I don't see them as separate episodes in my head anymore. Because... Yeah, when, yeah. They had... Well, they had to run together, right? Yeah. I think that's why they had to do it. But they even still, as they ended the episode, they just didn't... It, it wasn't a proper landing... A stop point, it yeah. felt like. You know, the campfire scene would have been, but the way they finished that and the way it was, it, it just didn't. There's no wasn't panning. A, there's no yeah. sort of music Even the dwindle. Music, it's just like, yeah, over. It was, I think, that, I think that was actually, honestly, that probably is what the issue was, is it could have, it needed to just slightly different panning, slightly different angle, and it needed the music to help guide you. Because you can even have, I think, visually, it would have been okay, but it needs music. It needs something to help bring us yeah. as the, eh, okay. you know. And finale. again, it's it's probably there's a lot more ways to do this than we know because a lot of like subculture, visual language, and audio language mm-hmm. that can be done there. But yeah, you you wonder because I definitely felt like I, I mentioned before. I thought like, oh, there should be more, shouldn't there? Like it's mm-hmm. so now I'm really it's not the length that bothered me. It's the fact that it just stopped. Now, here's the thing 
I think about. Sorry to interrupt you a million times this episode. Uh, clearly very excited. <laughs> well, go on. No, exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I always wonder, which inevitably happens now, someone's going to take the show and try to cut it down and make it into a oh. movie. And yeah. with those kind of bit scene ending things, they're making it very easy, aren't they? Yeah, it, this you're 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 absolutely right. I didn't even think about that, but much like what the folks have done already, this one I think will be easier, especially especially with there was so much just just empty, right? There was empty spaces, the timing, and things like that with the ending where it just wasn't really an ending. You can just cut this, cut things down, move it together, and you just create. We'll probably they'll probably be able to take all twelve of these episodes, make it maybe in an hour or twenty. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, some predictions. Do you think the heist is going to work? This one feels like I think it's going to work ish. I don't think we're going to see an absolute full on failure. We're going to see it work, but we'll probably we'll see our the the one character probably get killed. You you can say which in, character. In, we all know which character. Uh, uh, no, I just can't, I can't remember his name. Karis, uh, it's it's going to be Karis. I, yeah. I keep on saying, I, again. It, it's that the, the uh, so I, I guess I should should backtrack with saying my second complaint with it was it was particularly with this episode. Uh, the endings are for everything, but this this particular episode was just the introduction of so many names. I am still having to. I have my cheat sheet over here, and I'm still having trouble just yeah uh, and, with it. So, but that so that's one thing. I, I expect him will he will probably get killed. If not next episode, the following, something about this heist. There is something about this that feels like there's gonna be stuff that has to go wrong, right? Yeah. Nothing, nothing ever goes I mean, correct. Even him falling asleep while on guard duty, if that, mm-hmm. like there's a clue to like, he's going to not pay attention to something because he's just an excited. Sure. He's a kid. He's a kid, yeah. you know, and he's which makes it feel worse. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a premonition. Hurt. Yeah. yeah, so I feel like that will probably happen. Though again, with the pa- with the pacing, the way the show is, they may they're going to do it. They just may they may say that for down the road. That might be one of those things. Yeah. But I, I feel like that's our next episode. It feels about right as well from a timing perspective. That the next episode should have things that will be much more gut punch. Right? We have somebody to get killed. We had you know uh, what Tim that do we really care about no but he died in the previous episode yeah. right we had death we had that so now we have our break of here's some planning and stuff next episode all right we're back to more serious stakes so i expect he's probably going to die they will debatable about whether they'll even get the all of the the load right will they get yeah. the if indeed you know i'm not taking anything at face value anymore with things it's Will, is this really going to be a payroll? Will they find there's something else? Right? Or is is the intention that they're saying is payroll and reality? Yeah, they get they get the item and they go they open it up and they go this isn't a payroll. And they're like, yeah, this is supposed to, we yeah. we you know we've gotten whatever. There's a part of me. <clears throat> Actually, here's a quick question: Do you think him being like a historian uh, with art and stuff, and he likes like war stuff? Is he look getting trying to get a fucking uh, lightsaber? Because if he has a crystal, like, do you think he's just trying to like get his collection at the same time? Um, but I just got a collection. Yeah. yeah, just a side thing. Um, yeah, I I have a feeling it's going to backfire on them badly, and the backfire is going to get Luthen and Mothma into trouble. And I think that's what because I have a feeling uh, I mentioned it already that Mothma is not mm-hmm. going to be there for much long. She's going to have to skedaddle very soon, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't have, like, even by Rogue One, like, she's definitely going, because she's doing speeches, like, like, you, you, You're right. you know, like, there's no way that she's still going back to Coruscant after her, her weekend out with the Rebels, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, right, so, I, I don't know, I, I think, I'm trying, it, it's difficult, this, this show, I will say, one thing, what's, what's made it tricky is, Trying to predict where at what what point things are going to happen. We already have an idea about exactly what you've outlined that these things are going to happen. The pacing of the show is what's making me go. I'm not sure where are they going to place this. You know, because they are liking to drag some things out. Yeah. So are they going to place it more now and drag out some of the other stuff, or is this going to be one of the things that they're going to push 
See, you know. I, okay, so I personally think it's been super slow paced. It has. There, there is no denying mm-hmm. it. It's a slow paced show. But I'm wondering if they're doing this on top. It's going to be like a yeah. fairground ride. It's going up and right. then it's going to backfire. It's going to be like seeing the string of a dynamite uh, stick being lit up and it's chasing it down. And we're going to have Mothma going, shit. Mm-hmm. And I think the action's going to come. She really fast. might actually say that as we've seen. Yeah. She'll go, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like Star Wars, like Star Trek Betchy again, but <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I think there's going to be a big fallout from this heist. This heist feels like a thing that's destined so, to fail. You know? Yeah. It feels, it feels like set up, like, so that's why I'm, I, I still get that feeling of they're going to make it that they think they are successful at, at a cost. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. They, they could be that they will, whatever, it, or it, that could be very much it, but it's left behind the clues that then, that's the demise, right? That yeah. that's by them doing that, they've left behind the clues. Here's the thought. So the Death Star is definitely being built right now. We know that. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, so they're trying to get a role book of like who's getting paid what and the money. Mm-hmm. What if that is information on how they find out about the Death Star? Because it could be nearby. And this is where an entire Ooh. group of people that work in the Death Star, and that's how we get to Rogue One. Oh, you've hit a great one. That's where our linkage could be about about some, or that could be exactly why. See why we're being led to, and how exactly he can make it to everybody else without letting on he knows anything. That could be like, oh well, see, we just knew the payroll is here, so it's big money, of course. Yeah. And the reality is knowing that. This is where because they already did say that right that they were it's payroll it's records it's or yeah it's, it was it, they I said mean, it was a central place it's important yeah. it's important information so I you, remember I again they it, also right? told the last beginning you don't read any of the reports anymore the empire right. is here the empire is here now mm-hmm. the empire is in charge of every little secret that's going mm-hmm. on and what's more surgical than having a giant starship that gets rid of one planet like a cancer. Yep. I don't know. Yep. I think there's something here that's a part of. Oh, well, the and, and they and they of course did make when we go back to I believe it was when we were back showing the the uh, ISB. They make I think it was, was it there. They even make mention of Scarif, of that they're yeah. like, oh yes, and we're trying to you know for resources to uh, Scarif, and it's like yeah, ah, there's our little okay. So we know Scarif's already in works with getting getting stuff. So you know, uh, but that's a that's a good one. That's a good. I like it. I think that that makes a lot more sense and why then it would obviously make it that if that's the information they get, that, that it gets realized, Oh, that information has been breached. Yeah. Now you really got bounty on your head because it's not just you did something empire. Nope. You took information that is critical to their big project. And again, I mean, Andor is literally from a planet that has been mined to like a huge massive, like literally what looks like country-sized holes, mm-hmm. they could have been getting the resources. Because here's the thing, the Death Star was definitely worked on sometime just before the Empire. If, mm-hmm. we're, if we were to believe um, like the ending scenes in the original trilogy. Okay, well, the prequels, uh, in the prequels, right? Exactly, because right, that's exactly what we see when when you after he becomes Darth Vader and you see him standing there and you see the skeletal yeah. beginnings of a Dar- Death Star. So obviously that doesn't just happen overnight. No, yeah. Um, and just look, we can argue that you know a, a Darth Vader was Darth Vader for a while until we see that scene, but mm-hmm. it's definitely meant to show this early on. Yeah, I I think they may have already been mining for things. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the material. That was mined in this planet was brought there. It would explain why Andor says he's been fighting this all his life because it's literally right. from a planet he grew up on. They've been building a Death Star. Yeah, you know. Yeah, know. so that the, yeah, I think it, it will lead to a lot of inf- interesting yeah. information. Well, the, so what? One last tidbit I want to throw out there. I just thought was funny to me though is, and we didn't really touch upon in in at the ISB. We are introduced now to our, so now that we've got uh, what Cyril out of the way for the moment, we have to have another, you know, uh, another party in the mix. And now we have yes. Deidre, you know, who I couldn't help but laugh of that. I just felt like she's here to see the Imperial manager. 
Yeah. And she is, she is, you know, she obviously is, is, you know, here for business. I don't mean it. It's just, it's just funny that it felt like they were kind of giving her a little bit of a, you know, I'm, I'm here to see the manager kind of vibe, but, uh, she's going to be interesting to see. Now we see her conflict with, you know, the rest, rest of the, uh, bureau going on as she realizes the, the hunt for the, uh, the star path unit. Uh, I think it's what they call it, star path unit. That Again, she's, star she's path interested. unit. Interesting term. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you know. That's, yeah. So that's that's something. Um. Uh, we're, we're obviously, we're going to see now. I think that that follows into. Right. She she's digging into things. Obviously, we see she's she's good at picking up information, looking yeah. looking into things. So you've got her on on the on the trail. We're we're gonna see that that collide as well. So I'm I'm, I'm interested in seeing what what more yeah. we'll do with her. I hope they kind of build her up more. She she I think has the potential to be a little more interesting and yeah. scary. It was a little bit boring scary... in this episode. I think like they didn't really do much yeah. with her. You know. Yeah, and that's why I say I hope they do they do more with her. I would like to see, uh, you know, more with with her and the Empire of of how they're hunting them down. Right, yeah. that you genuinely get. I I want that scare. Even no matter how I know it, ultimately all winds up. I want to be scared in this moment. Even of going like, wait, are they really going to kill them? Even though you're like, well, you know, they can't kill him because he's in the he's in the movie, or, you know, yeah. kind of thing. But you, I want that feeling of like, yeah. oh man. What's... Well, I mean, good storyline will make you forget about that kind of stuff in the moment. It like, mm-hmm. could be, oh my god, he's going to get hurt. He's, I I I know people give out say, oh, we know these cards going to live, so there's nothing to worry about. Like, first of all. That's not true. Like, your brain only keeps so much in the back while you're watching a program. If mm-hmm. you were aware of, like, if you watch Star Wars, right, and you actively are thinking of every canonically fat act throughout the entire franchise, you're not watching Star Wars anymore. You, you can't. Yeah. Your eyes would go black while you're going through a mm-hmm. live information. So I, like, good storytelling will make you forget about. Yep. What's to come? Besides, they could have just got like a C three PO, C three PO droid, and just put his mask and say, "Hey, that's Andro from the movie." C three PO has been there all along. <laughs> anyway, um, I think we'll leave it there for this week, <laughs> um, folks. We hope you enjoyed it. Let us know about your own theories. Any. Uh, facts that we may have missed. What well, else we miss um, in that um, art historian's shop in the back? I'm sure there's a lot more um, that's there. I, I, I'm always wondering, like, was the stuff from you know the legendary years of Star Wars, like maybe little references of? Because surely, like, like a lot of this stuff, it's not just props that they got from some storeroom. Like, someone made this to be in line with Star Wars. Like so, I'm, right. I'm interested. I'm very, very interested. Uh, yeah, folks, let us know, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. What's in the book? Presented by Sure It'll Be Grand.